As my handful of regular subscribers will know, most of my videos have a rather bucolic quality to them. Perhaps not surprising, as the stations I profile last saw a train seven decades ago. But in a change to our usual schedule, I'm profiling a station that's still in service. And in fact, this was my local station for several years. Now, it can't be said that Sydenham in its current guise is beautiful, and Northern Ireland Railways must have known it too, as about a year after I'd started using the station regularly, they commissioned a local artist to brighten up what are, let's face it, rather drab surroundings. The new mural primarily commemorated East Belfast industry, but it was this part of it that first piqued my interest in the history of what I later found out was called the Belfast and County Down Railway. In 1851, when the station first opened, it was nothing more than a stopping place, without platforms, for trains going between Belfast and Hollywood. Both the area and the station were still known as Bally Missert or Bally Mysert, I'm not sure of the correct pronunciation, but the area was only given the name Sydenham in 1854, three years after the station opened. And the reason for this was that James Entwistle, one of the many builders doing the rounds of this part of County Down at the time, thought the name Sydenham, borrowed from the leafy district of South London, would make his new enterprise sound more appealing than the original name, presumably also why the likes of Windsor, between the Malone and Lisburn roads, has that name. This picture, apparently painted from a hot air balloon hovering over Belfast Lock and looking east towards the Castlereagh Hills, shows how rural the newly named area was at the time. You can clearly make out the layout of Station Road, Palmerston Road and even Circular Road, and most importantly a little steam train making its way from Hollywood to Belfast. The short line to Hollywood had been the first length of railway that the BCDR had built in 1848, but by the 1850s it was in financial trouble. The rival Belfast, Hollywood and Bangor Railway, or BHBR, had built the rest of the line between Bangor and Hollywood in the 1860s, but had no way of getting into Belfast. So, the wily BCDR sold the rest of the line, including Sydenham, so that it could get to Queen's Quay, and so it was the BHBR that built Sydenham Station in the 1870s. But in only a decade, the tables turned again, and it was the BHBR that was in trouble. It had to lease its entire line to the BCDR, and in 1884, the BHBR's assets were transferred to the BCDR for good. Hope you kept up with that. The station itself was a typical red brick railway building of the era, with the station master's house and station building combined into one. Unusually, it appears that passengers had to access the station building from the platform and not the street, using the footbridge that, unlike now, you had to use even if you wanted to stay on the Belfast bound side of the tracks. As an aside, I always thought that a covered footbridge was the sole preserve of Coltraw Station a few miles up the track, which was obliged to protect its residents from the seaside weather. But as this photo shows, Sydenham residents commanded similar protection from the elements. There was also a level crossing right beside this footbridge for military personnel who wished to cross the tracks to get to the airfield that would later become Belfast Harbour Airport. But that wasn't its only use, as local children, paying little heed to the no trespassing signs, often made their way across the railway to Bruce's shop to either buy some fries or some prosaically advertised Clark's chocolates. There was no dual carriageway in those days, although not long after this photo was taken they did start building a new road in 1925. As regular viewers will know, the Bangor line was spared the chop when its new owners, the Ulster Transport Authority, closed the rest of the County Down lines in 1950, and although many of the station houses along the line at places like Coltraw, Marino, Craigavad and Carnley were preserved, for reasons I can't quite fathom, Sydenham wasn't one of them, and in the 60s the original station buildings were demolished and cleared away, leaving the once pleasant station as a rather desolate hold. 
and the opening of the Sydenham Bypass parallel to the railway in 1959 didn't help. These days there is almost no trace of the old station architecture aside from about 6 feet of the old platform with those distinctive crisscross edging tiles at the Hollywood end of the city bound side. To make matters worse, in 1978 NIR built this horrific footbridge to span not only the railway but also the dual carriageway and, as a sign of the times, covered it over so the local children couldn't drop bricks on the passing traffic. The old footbridge, as you can see in the background, was still there. BBC News of the time reported with some astonishment that it cost £78,000 to build but, in fairness, 42 years later it's still there, so they got their money's worth and they haven't even bothered to change this sign. While it unquestionably did the job of carrying people from one side of the carriageway to the other, its utilitarian, almost brutalist design was hard to warm to, even when they tried to brighten it up with a paint job, first red in the 80s and latterly blue after the refurb of 2008. It also isn't much use to passengers with mobility issues or, for that matter, vertigo. A successful descent to the platforms is always an achievement, especially in inclement conditions, although the height does mean you get a great view of the shipyard and airport on a clear day. These days Sydenham is the closest thing we have to a dedicated station for Belfast City Airport. In fairness, the airport entrance was much closer to the footbridge 30 years ago than it now is, but it would still be nice if there was even an underpass to connect the Hollywood end of the platforms to the arrivals lounge. But on reflection, that's probably the least of the airport's worries at the time of filming. I hope you enjoyed this new slant on an old recipe. As ever, please like, comment and subscribe if you did. I don't think I'll be going too far for my next instalment. As a clue, my subject is still on rails but isn't a train. See you next time.